Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Wow, this last couple of days have been crazy, 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 crazy. So a uh, quick update, guys. Uh, my grandma is doing better. However, I, I did mention a couple of uh, videos ago that she is, well, really old and on the, on the last uh, stretch of her life, right? So right now we're taking care of her, making sure she feels as comfortable as possible. But we know that the time is it's coming. It's 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 uh, unavoidable. It's something that everyone's gonna go through at some point in their lives, right? So, yeah. Thankfully, we were able to be with her and um, um, just talk and you know have good time. Uh, but we're on that stretch. So probably in the next couple of weeks, um, <laughs> I, I might get the call, unfortunately, and uh, we'll know that it's it's time. But uh, before we, uh, or until that happens, uh, well, I, I would like to continue doing some more three D work. That doesn't mean that we're gonna stop the three D work or anything. Just letting you know a little bit of, uh, of my personal life. So um, we had this video pending from a couple of uh, sessions ago. I mentioned that when we hit uh, 17,000 subscribers, which was a couple of weeks ago, we were gonna do an animation with this Majora's Mask. I believe I've already shared the folder for this one. I'm gonna double check. I'm gonna go back to the video and double check to make sure that this model with its texture is available for you guys because uh, when we did this one, I showed you a quick rundown about the like the big groups and the and the texture uh, palettes and stuff. And uh, right now, I believe we have an animation here where the Majora's Mask just like goes from, from top to bottom, or it can just rotate around. So I wanna show you how we can convert this into a, an even nicer animation. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're, we're just gonna use the tools inside of Marmoset to create an animation where the mask kinda like floats up and then it starts rotating and then the lights kinda like come on, come on or they start like lighting the whole scene okay so the first thing i want to do is i want to create a little bit of a different light setup here so i'm gonna bring this light down and i'm gonna have this one over here so eventually at the at the very end of the animation i want to have uh, something that's called a split um like composition where one light's going to be shining from one side and the other one's going to be shining from the other side of course so we're going to have this sort of like split composition so so this is what we're gonna go for. This is gonna be like my final shot, okay? So we're gonna make sure that this happens at 10 seconds. So it's gonna be like a 10 second animation. Our timeline down here is already set up at 10 seconds, so that's fine. Let me go here and I'm gonna turn off ray tracing just for now. Uh, we're gonna turn it uh, back on uh, later on um, so that we can calibrate what we want. So right now uh, we have this thing, this turntable, and this turntable is creating, of course, a turntable of our element. So anything that's inside of this thing is just like, turning around. I don't want that, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually grab this guy, like the the bake, and bring it up or out. And now, if I delete this one and I hit play, well, nothing's gonna happen because nothing's being animated. And animation inside of Marmoset it's super simple. You're gonna select whatever you want to animate. In this case, is this Majora's Mask low poly uh, mesh, and we're gonna go here into the keyframes. And my keyframes, as the name implies, are are the things that I'm gonna be able to uh, set a key to. So it's it's kind of like I'm gonna be telling Marmoset, hey, I want this object to be at this position in this time, okay? So let's create a shot cam because I don't think, oh, we do have a, a camera shot, okay? So let me see. Okay, let, let me bring the camera like to the front view like this, there we go. And I'm actually gonna go here into the camera and I'm gonna lock it. And I'm gonna click this button so that I can um, bring it out. And that way on my other screen, I'm, I'm seeing this on my other screen, oh, well, let's bring this right here. We can actually like dock this wherever we want, but I'm gonna keep it just like a, like a small little window. This is like my final my final shot, right? This is what I'm gonna be well, looking at. So I want my Majora's mask to start below my camera. So it can it will, as I mentioned, it will float up. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this guy right here. I'm gonna grab my Majora's mask. I'm gonna look into the attributes, and you can see that we have this transforms, and we have transform in X, Y, and C. In this case, the transformation that we want is Y. So I'm gonna go into translation Y. And I'm gonna bring my Majora's mask down, like really down, so that I don't see it here on this viewport. And I'm gonna set a keyframe with this little button, which is gonna add a keyframe to that position. And then uh, I'm gonna go back to camera, to the main camera. There we go. And then let's say it's gonna take three seconds. So I'm gonna move all the way to three seconds. And in three seconds, the, the, the Majora's mask is gonna come on uh, up here. And I'm gonna set keyframe. And as you can see, we get this, which is a very cool thing. It, it has to do a little bit with animation, uh, but this is the interpolation. So that means how it's gonna go from position A to position B. And right now, this is a very like super basic S curve, which is gonna kind of slow in and slow out into the into the transition. So if I were to play this, take a look at this little window over here. This is where we're gonna get. We're gonna see how the mask 
just kind of like floats up and just stays there. So I'm gonna do something here that I like to call an overshoot. So I'm gonna go like a couple of frames after this, I'm gonna go slightly up as if we were kind of like going above the frame and then I'm gonna set a keyframe there and then I'm gonna go back here and I wanna set the keyframe back down to like there and set the keyframe. That way what's gonna happen is the mask is gonna come, come, like, come up and then settle down into a nice position here. And if I were to play this, oh, let's play this, we'll get this sort of animation where the mask kind of like goes up and it settles down. Now, as you can see there, the settling down was a little bit too harsh. It's, it's, it's like way, way too intense. And the reason why things can get intense in animation has to do with something called timing. And timing is how long it takes from one point of the animation to change into another point. So right now, as you can see, the points here are really close together. So if I were to move this out to just like spread this out a little bit like this, now what I would expect is for the mask to create like a very nice soft transition. Let's see. Okay, that's a little bit better. Still not great. Uh, still not exactly what I want to do. Uh, and here's where we can spline this thing, which means modifying these things. And I can kind of like lower this. Like, let, let's lower the intensity here. So I don't want the mask to go like extremely up. I just want to go a little bit up and then settle down on the thing. And we can actually modify this curvature here so that the thing creates a nice smooth transition. Let's see how this looks. Again, I'm paying attention to this square over here. Okay, I like that, I like that. that, that looks a little bit nicer. Now, at the same time, while we're doing this, we could actually add a little bit of uh, like a, an animation where this thing goes up and down and, and that could work very nicely as well. So let's say that after it settles down, like a couple of seconds after this, let's say uh, six seconds, it's gonna go slightly up. And let's set the keyframe there. And then like at eight seconds, we're gonna go slightly down, slightly, not, not that much and set the keyframe. And then at 10 seconds, which is where our animation is going to be ending, slightly up. So now what we're going to get, as you can see, is we're going to get this very nice animation where the, where the mask just kind of like hovers right there on the, on the spot, right? It creates this very nice, interesting look. Okay, so this is the basis of animation. And if you've taken our premium course, which by the way, just a quick uh, plug in here, uh, you can check the Maya intro, intro to Maya course or the intro to animation course. Uh, in both of those, we cover all of these principles inside of Maya, but those those animation principles, that's one of the cool things about the, the course, they're, they're like, you can change them to whichever software you use. So even though it's specifically for Maya, a lot of those things translate to all of these different applications because as long as you have a graph editor and you can set keyframes, you're gonna be able to create this sort of animations. So there we go. That's the that's the animation for the um, for the for the main camera, which I really like, or for the mask. Now let's talk about the animation for the lights themselves. So I know that I want this light setup to be the final light setup once the, the mask kind of like comes into frame. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna grab both lights, this light one and light two, control G to group them so that the group is right in the middle there of my of my element. Give me just one second. There we go. And um, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna, I'm gonna animate the intensity of the light. So I'm gonna go here to the light one. Let's go into, into the spot options. No, uh, where is it? Here in the range in the brightness and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the brightness down to pretty much like nothing or barely like barely touching my mask so that we don't see like complete blackness but just barely touching I'm gonna say set the keyframe. Well, before we do that let me remember okay my, my final number is gonna be 7.2 so on, on my first frame let's keep it like really low and set a keyframe and then on frame let's say frame 4 by frame 4 we'll recover the whole element so 7.2 so what's gonna happen now, and we're gonna of course set the keyframe, what's gonna happen now is that the light will start shining and it will create this shine until we hit the element. Now you can see that there's a lot of time here, two seconds actually, where, where this thing is not like actually shining or it's actually already like really high. So I'm gonna bring this down still to like this. Let's set the keyframe again. So now that the light goes like down and until the mask starts showing, it's until that point that we see full that the nice like change in, in brightness coming into, into scene. I kind of like the, the, the blue hue, like it, it looks very mysterious and I think it looks, it looks cool. So let's go back here and now we can see this little bit of a small scale, what's gonna happen there. There you go. Now it, it might seem a little bit like intense to see the, the whole like, like a guide. So let me just click out of the guide and we should be able to see how intense that transition is. Okay, I think it's good. I, I, I don't think it's that bad. I think it looks it looks okay. It might be a little bit too fast. So I'm gonna go back to light one. 
and let's bring this guy and just push it a couple of frames after this. So it takes a little bit longer until we get like the full intensity of the light and we should be able to see like a smaller transition. Again, it, it kind of looks very intense due to the to the guides. So let's just uh, watch it again without the, the guides. And you, you're gonna be able to see this very nice, soft, like warm light coming into, into the scene. And what we can do, this is this is super cool. This is where the where the hierarchy levels of the animation come in, comes into place. We're gonna be able to rotate the lights around to create again another different feel. So let's say that at uh, frame four, which is roughly where where the lights are like behaving properly, I wanna rotate the group. That's why we group the whole thing first because I wanna be able to rotate the the two lights as a group so that they pivot on the on the center of the object. So I'm gonna go to the transform of my group. And then on the rotation on Y, I'm gonna set a keyframe right here. And then let's start rotating the light. I'm not gonna do 360 rotation. I think that's gonna be a little bit too much. So I'm just gonna do, let's say 180 or like negative, negative 180. So we're gonna get this sort of thing right here. Maybe this is like a, like, yeah, I like that one. That, that one's like a good, like a finishing touch for the whole thing. And we're gonna keyframe this thing. So now, as you can see, what's gonna happen is at, at one point, the lights are gonna start rotating, like slowly rotating until we get a nice animation. Now let's take a look at this one. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And this would be like my final animation. So nothing, the mask comes into view, the light shines, and then after a couple of moments, the lights just rotate around until we get this very nice, like contrasty look at the end. Very cool, right? So yeah, I mean, this is pretty much it. I, I want to do this video, I know this is a short video, just to show you how, how powerful this kind of things uh, can be. Like creating a simple, again, like a 10 second animation for this took no time and, uh, and we get a very, very nice result. Now, a couple of things before we go. We need to render this out and unfortunately, uh, we are not gonna be able to preview this uh, with the RTX turned on. So if I were to turn on uh, ray tracing, and I go to like one specific frame, I will see the effect. But if I try to hit play, it kind of replaces the ray tracing with just the traditional full quality preview without ray tracing. So, so it won't allow me to see this, uh, this particular thing. So what can I do here? Well, I need to render this as a final video. I'm gonna go here to the render options. Down here, I'm gonna select the, um, where is it? Here, the render cameras. And as you can see, it's set to camera one. So that's the, that's the thing that I'm gonna be uh, exporting. And I want to export uh, an, an MP, a MPEG4, so it's an MP4, 100 compression quality so that we get the best quality. I, I don't want to go um, 1920 by 1080. Let's do, let's do 1080 by 1080, so like a square composition. Um, I should be able to grab my camera here. There we go, camera one. And I'm going to unlock the camera. And I'm going to select the object. And I'm going to say scene or sorry, view, frame selection. There we go. And I'm just gonna zoom in and that's it. So I know that that's a, a good position. That's where, where everything's gonna be happening. Right now, the only thing I need to do is I'm gonna hit um, here on the render again, that go down here to the render video and just hit a render video. As you can see, it's gonna render to the, my, uh, my uh, desktop. It will take a while, of course, the, the more powerful your computer, the faster this is gonna be. So let me pause real quick the, the video so that this is not uh, super intense and I'll see you back when this is done. There we go, guys. So it took about, I would say, five minutes to, to render the whole thing. And this is what we have. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Really cool, right? Now, you can take this into After Effects, do any other, like, post-production and stuff. Uh, but at the end of the day, having a render that fast, like, five minutes for ten seconds, that's a lot of time. Um, I think you guys can get a why why this is so important. So if you like the Marmoset thing, I can I would strongly recommend one of my best courses I think, which is the complete guide to Marmoset Four, which is down here in the description. Make sure to check the Udemy course. Uh, and that's it. Tomorrow Monday we'll be back with um with our portfolio review that I know I had to postpone during this weekend due to my grandma situation. Uh, but yeah, so tomorrow Monday and Tuesday we'll have our portfolio review. Sorry for having to postpone this thing, and then we'll continue with more um lighthouse and just Maya and modeling techniques and stuff. I I'm thinking about having uh, modeling Maya uh, to do like uh, exercises like the ones for the for the knife that we've been doing because those have been getting some good responses. So let me know down in the comments if that's something that you guys are interested in, like the like a Monday Maya, Ma Ma Monday Maya and maybe like a like a Tuesday Texture Tuesday or something. You know, fancy names <laughs> bring nice uh, nice. Uh, interaction. So yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you for your support. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.